and safe at your home. Now coming to chemistry, uh, the only topic left with the chapter number two solution is osmosis. Okay, so before just diving to the main topic, let me recapitulate the whole solution uh, chapter in just two to three minutes. Uh, in this chapter, we have studied basically uh, what solution actually is, what are their properties, how the solution uh, mix with each other, which laws are there. We have studied Rolle's law, which uh, we have studied Henry's law. And uh, besides this, we have studied colligative properties, which are the more, which is the most important topic of this chapter. And uh, in these colligative properties, we have studied one thing that is the colligative properties depends upon the number of solute particle uh, that is dissolving into solvent rather than the uh, nature of the solute. Okay, and on the basis of these colligative properties, we have studied uh, vapor pressure, we have studied boiling point, we have studied freezing point, and the last colligative okay. property that is osmosis. Okay, so what actually osmosis wants to define us, what actually osmosis is. Okay, before going to osmosis, let's uh, uh, come to some physical things you have studied in your daily life. You have seen that uh, when uh, Vitted flour is put into water, it's revived after some time. Or we put uh, our, you know, uh, your uh, the summer season is coming, your uh, pickles or your raw mangoes, and we put them into salty water, they shrink. So, what are these processes that flour is reviving and the pickles are shrinking? What actually is happening? This basically terms depend on the uh, particular process known as osmosis. See, all these things depend upon a particular term known as semi-permeable membrane. The semi-permeable membrane is quite basic, which can be found synthetic as well as natural in your daily life. Like it can be uh, any kind of pig's bladder or it can be synthetic like cellophane or something. Okay, so osmosis is basically the process of flow of solvent through the solute, uh, through the semi permeable membrane into solution is known as osmosis. I'm again repeating, I want to just say that if we have any kind of semi permeable membrane, what is semi permeable membrane? I have just explained. Semi permeable membrane, the name suggests the membrane which permits only semi form, only in little form. The semi-permeable membrane is of something which allows only some kind of particles, either it is solvent or it is solute, okay? So the semi-permeable membrane through which solvent is flowing into solution. We have already solvent here and we have solvent is flowing to the solution through semi-permeable membrane is known as osmosis. Am I clear? Now, what actually it defines? The solvent is flowing into solution. That means the solution contains less amount of solvent. Am I clear? It's very uh, simple thing that if we have, uh, let we have only water here as a solvent and we have both uh, salt plus water. This salt plus water is known as your solution and this solvent is purely water, okay? Now the pure solvent, the pure water, here the quantity of solvent is higher. Now if I'm talking about the solution, here the quantity of salt plus water, that means the quantity of solvent is lesser than the pure solvent. So I also can define that in osmosis, the process is moving of solvent from higher concentration to lower concentration. I'm again repeating, the process of flow of solvent from higher concentration to lower concentration. But make remember, make it mind that the higher concentration, the lower concentration is of solvent. No solute, no the solution, okay? So I hope I have made clear, osmosis is a flow of 
solvent through the semi permeable membrane into the solution and this semi permeable membrane could either be uh, any kind of natural thing like uh, we are having mangoes membrane we are having pigs membrane we are having flowers membrane or it could be any synthetic membrane like we are having cellophane or uh, some synthetic membranes we have uh, created in our laboratories okay so this is known as osmosis now the point is can we stop our osmosis process after some time yes definitely we can stop our osmosis process after some time how can we stop our osmosis process after some time for stopping our osmosis process for just uh, making it at a stop what can we do we must apply a pressure that stops the osmosis process and that particular pressure is known as osmotic pressure so i would say osmotic pressure is defined as that particular pressure that maximum pressure at which no more osmosis is taking place so this is the last particular pressure at which osmosis is taking place if we just increase a little bit pressure then osmotic pressure the osmosis process would be stopped down okay so this was all about the theoretical topic and the concept about osmosis and osmotic pressure i hope i'm clear about this now coming to our numerical portion see uh, as we have studied in our colligative properties all the colligative properties we have studied we have make a numerical derivation of all these colligative properties same as it is if i'm talking about these particular uh, this uh, numerical derivation see we know that the colligative properties are depend upon the number of molecules okay so let we have let assume that the osmotic pressure is denoted by pi this is our osmotic pressure it is directly proportional to molarity or we can say concentration now the question arises why are we not representing our molarity as uh, capital m you will make it clear when we solve it after some time basically the only thing to denote it as capital c is because as we would solve it further we would make capital m as mass of the molecule okay that's why now the osmotic pressure pi must be directly proportional to molarity as well as temperature okay because it depends upon the number of molecules it depends upon the number of solute that's why we are taking it as molarity okay now pi is directly proportional to ct if we are removing the proportionality constant we are putting a proportionality constant that is r that is gas constant you have studied it from the 11th class r is your gas constant 8.314 joule per kelvin or 0.0821 so many values okay now pi is equal to crt and if we further solve it what as molarity defines molarity is basically number of the solute particles dissolved into 1 liter of the solution so pi equals to n2 by vrt and for the please solve it pi equals to what is n2 w2 over m2 rt and if we need to calculate our mass what would happen m2 equals to w2 rt divided by pi v so this is the numerical derivation to calculate our molecular mass of the solute or we can say this is the uh, definition this is the whole experiment uh, sorry whole numerical derivation that how we can say that our osmotic pressure is directly dependent upon the number of molecules n okay all right now the point is we have studied all these things what osmosis is what is it's basically you know physical significance the physical significance of, of osmosis is the most important rather than all the colligative properties that's why this topic is so much 
used in our daily life okay as i have already given you example of flowers pickles same as it is in the chemistry lab we have so many uh, you know large number of molecules like polymers macromolecules which you will study in the uh, you know 16 or 17 chapter in the same class but the point is with the help of osmosis we can calculate the molecular mass of these high macromolecules okay so this is the best significance of osmosis all right now on the basis of osmosis and osmotic pressure we have basically three different type of uh, solution which are known as isotonic solution hypertonic solution and hypotonic solution what these solutions wants to define us let's make them clear now let's move to our next topic what is or oh, these solutions okay i think i should rub that now what is isotonic solution hypertonic solution and hypotonic solution on the basis of osmotic pressure on the basis of osmotic pressure basically three different type of solutions known as isotonic hypertonic and hypotonic now what does it define isotonic as the name suggests if we have two type of solutions having the same osmotic pressure then these solutions are known to be isotonic solutions i'm clear about this if we have two solutions having the same osmotic pressure that means these solutions are said to be isotonic and if i'm talking about hyper and hypo hyper defines greater and hypo defines lesser okay what does it mean that hyper defines greater and hypo defines lesser let make it clear with the help of an example okay uh, if we are having if we are putting a, a human body cell into a brine solution what is brine solution basically brine solution is solution of sodium chloride into water that's in chemical thing or that's in medical abbreviation is known as brine solution okay now the point is what is a uh, what happens when blood cells is put in brine solution on the basis of the concentration of the brine solution we have two different type of observations that our uh, cells would make let me make them clear now first point is first point is suppose if we are having the concentration of brine solution more than 0.9% 0.9% is basically the ideal situation the ideal solution in which we can put our in which we can put our uh, you can say uh, our blood cell and they are um, at the safe mode okay if we are putting our blood cell into the brine solution having 0.9 concentration they are in the safe mode okay we can store them for a long time okay but if we put them into our solution having more than 0.9% more than 0.9% what would happen see the osmosis defines us that the flow of solvent through the solution through the semi permeable membrane into solution is known as osmosis okay now what would happen if we uh, you know make them put them into more than 0.9% quite simple is this when we are putting them into the solution having more concentration the water from the cells would flow out and would start moving into the solution and what would happen the blood cell would be shrink the blood cell would be shrink and this is known as hypertonic solution and in more concentration the water the flow of solvent would start moving to the solution you know 
and the solution would be uh, the solution is the solu uh, containing salt and water and the solvent is water the solvent would start moving the solvent would start moving and what would happen the solution uh, the blood cell would be shrink and if i'm talking about hypotonic solution if we are having less than 0.9% percent what would happen if we are putting less into the solution of less than zero point solution but what would happen according to you in this case the flow of solvent was moving the flow of water was getting out of the blood cell and now in this case what would happen the flow of water would start getting into the blood cell okay the case would be reverse and that's why it is known as hypotonic solution the case would be reverse because now the concentration is less over there so what would happen the water would start moving into the cell and our cell would be swell and this process is known as hypotonic solution okay so this was the all the conditions that are explained on the basis of isotonic solution hypotonic solution and hypotonic solution all right class and very important thing is that uh, with the help of uh, not only these uh, experiments i have shown shrink then swell these are the most important topic for your board exam as well as your competitive exams especially the blood cell or we can put uh, you know uh, the egg example or the mango example that if we are putting them into salt solution what would happen these would be the your two different observations okay so make them clear that if the concentration is higher look see the osmosis basically defines us that we are moving our solvent to the solution okay so solvent would move where the concentration is lesser solvent is your water it would start moving to the solution so if the concentration if of the solution is higher if the concentration of solvent is lesser both things are quite different don't be confused okay the flow of solvent would be start moving automatically in that particular direction okay and these all things are known as osmosis not only the these theoretical questions numericals are also important let's have a numerical in your notebook we have an example if we are having 200 ml of an aqueous solution of a protein contains 1.26 g of the protein the osmotic pressure of such a solution at 300 kelvin is found to be this calculate the molar mass okay so basically we have all these all our properties all our you know uh, physical quantities that we need so we just need to make our solution complete now just put what we have we are given volume 200 cm cube now 200 cm cube means 200 ml you must know that this is unit conversion we have studied in chapter 1 or even you have studied that in lower classes 1 cm cube is equals to 1 ml so we have to convert it into liter first and uh, the osmotic pressure pi is given as 2.57 into 10 raised to power minus 3 bar temperature is given as 300 kelvin you must know about the r value now what is r value you know about r value that r value is 8.314 as well as 0.0821 but it depends upon the unit given to you if kelvin is given if bar is given then you would use 0.9 rather than 8.31 okay keep in your mind so what would happen we would just make into the formula that is m2 is equals to what was the formula uh, let me make clear w2rt over pi v so all the terms are given to you just put them into them and make the solution clear w2 is also given 1.26 make them and give the answer all right class
Now, osmosis is completed. Now we are left with only the reverse osmosis. What is reverse osmosis and why do we need to study them? Before going to reverse osmosis, let me make clear that why do we need to study reverse osmosis? Basically, uh, reverse osmosis is the process through which water purification arises. Now, what is water purification? You have studied about the RO, haven't you? In your daily life, in your uh, homes, you have shown about the, you have studied about the ROs, you have using the ROs. These ROs are depend upon the topic reverse osmosis. Now, what is reverse osmosis? All right. Before going to reverse osmosis, let me make. So basically, if we're uh, putting pressure more than uh, the exact pressure we need, we can stop the osmosis. And what would happen if we make our pressure in that way that our flow of solvent would start moving into opposite direction. Now the flow of solvent was moving to the solution. If we are putting the if we are making the reverse osmosis, what would happen? The flow of solution would start moving to the solvent. Okay, so in that way, we can say that if we put more pressure more than if we put pressure. more than osmotic pressure, what would happen? The reverse osmosis would start flowing. And with the help of this, you can use, with the help of reverse osmosis, you can use water purification. Even the sea water is purified with the help of this. How? Like if we're putting more than uh, osmotic pressure, we are putting pressure more than osmotic pressure, what would happen? The reverse osmosis would start. So from the sea water, from the sea water, the pure water would be squeezed out. And if from the solution, the flow of solution to the solvent would start moving. Okay, so from the solution, we are extracting our solvent. This is the reverse osmosis, okay? So that was a very simple topic and very short topic. This was all about osmosis class. Now we're left with only our last topic that is abnormal molar mass. That is abnormal molar mass. What is abnormal molar mass? Okay, what is the abnormal molar mass? Before going to abnormal molar mass, let's have some, uh, you know, uh, some basic examples you have studied already in your daily lives. We have some uh, acids or base, or we have some uh, salts which dissociates. So what is happening when we are having potassium chloride? When we are having potassium sulfate? Or if we are having benzene, we are having acetone. What would happen if we are mixing these solutions, if we are putting that solution for some time, the molar mass would be either higher or greater. Why? Because we know very well that our potassium chloride or our potassium sulfate can be easily dissociates into K positive plus Cl negative. Same as it is K2SO4 would be dissociates into 2K positive plus SO4 negative. Same as it is this benzene solution. 
these benzene solution, these acetone solution, start dimerizing or polymerizing. What does it mean? Due to hydrogen bonding, you know very well, due to hydrogen bonding, the molecule starts getting attached to each other after some time. This is known as dimerization or polymerization. For example, we have carboxylic acid. Or for example, we have acetone. Let we have carboxylic acid uh, let, or acetone. Let we have any kind of carboxylic acid like CS3COH. If we are mixing two molecules of CS3COH, what would happen after some time, these molecules would start polymerizing and what would happen? O, H, C. Sir, uh, is everything okay? All right. So and after some time, there would be hydrogen bonding between oxygen and hydrogen. Same as it is, these oxygen, these hydrogen would start dimerizing. So I would just want to say that if we put after some time, if we put, uh, if we check out their molecular mass, their colligative properties, what would happen? If I'm talking about this, the number of ions are more rather than first. First, there was only potassium chloride and potassium sulfate. And now they're getting dissociated. After dissociation, the number of solvent particles are higher and the colligative properties only and only depend upon the number of molecules rather than the nature. So the number is higher. If I'm talking about this, there was two and now it is only the number one. Okay, so what would happen? The mass would be just half than the normal molar mass. Same as it is here, the mass would be double than the normal molar mass. I hope I'm making a sense to you. So from these two, three examples, what actually comes to our mind that if we have some kind of molecules that can either associate or dissociate, their molecular mass would not be normal. Their molecular mass would not be normal and either it would be higher or either it would be lower. And this higher or lower molar mass is known as abnormal molar mass. Am I clear? So basically the abnormal molar mass is defined as the increment or the decrement in the normal molar mass of the solution of the, uh, of the solute particles into the solution is known as abnormal molar mass. Okay, And the reason behind this is known as association or dissociation. And this association or dissociation also has been made clear by Van Hoff vector, which is defined, which is denoted by small i. This small i Van Hoff vector is basically known as dissociation constant also or association constant, and it defines us. Let me rub this. What it defines that I equals to abnormal molar mass or molar uh, normal molar mass. I hope I have written it clear. No, normal molar mass or abnormal molar mass, yes. Or we can say that I basically defined as observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property. 
or we can say that colligative property before calculating or colligative property after calculating this is known as i the association or dissociation factor or the van t hoff factor okay so this was all about the abnormal molar mass which basically gives us the i having the solution if we are having the solution which contains the particles that are dissociating the molar mass would be doubled and if the solution contains the solvent which are associating to each other then the molar mass would be just half this is basically known as abnormal molar mass okay so this was all about the topic solution now class if we have any kind of doubt or something you can ask to me let me just recapitulate the whole class and then we would have a query session is there something else left in this topic no uh, just that you know very well that if we are putting all our colligative properties then we are putting this factor over here like if i'm talking delta tf i kf if we are putting pi equals to crt we are putting i over here because this i would elaborate the number this i would make the major significant okay so in today's class we have completed our chapter number 2 solution in this chapter we have studied in today's class we have studied osmosis which defines us the flow of solvent through the solution through the semi permeable membrane into the solution is known as osmosis now the osmosis have many physical significance for example we are having hypotonic solution hypertonic solution isotonic solution and we have studied about blood cells that are shrinking and that are swelling and rather than we have studied the reverse osmosis on the basis of which we can purify our water and lastly we have studied abnormal molar mass which can only be changed by van t hoff factor which can be de which depend upon the association or dissociation if the association is occurring that means the number of molecules are decreasing so the molecular mass would also be decreased and if we are having uh, if we are having a uh, dissociation that means the number of molecules would be higher the molecular mass would also be higher okay so this was all about today's class if you have any kind of doubt please ask me